Hey guys, welcome to my Beginner's Primers to Planet Tank series. In this series, we're going to talk about planet tanks and how to keep a thriving planet tank. I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible and lay off the chemistry as much as possible. Still going to talk a little about chemistry. It's unavoidable. This is to just get you started. So in other words, we're going to assume two things. One, you already know how to start a fish tank without plants. Okay, just fish decorations or whatever you know about the cycling process and everything so you know how to set up a basic tank two you want to add plants to your tank just to give it either a natural look or you want to dive into the whole planted tank hobby first thing first when you do research about doing a planted tank you're going to get a lot of conflicting info on the internet trust me when i got back into this i was so frustrated because one person will say this other person will say that which is totally conflicting with the other person it just really drills down to this, their experience. Are they right? Are they wrong? You can't really be sure. They're probably right in their experience. Each tank is its own environment. There's so many parameters to how plants will grow in a tank based on water chemistry, based on your temperature, based on what's in your tank, based on how much is in your tank, etc., etc. So what I'm going to try to do here is trying to get you through all that crapola and try to get you started in the basics, but you're still going to have questions so you're going to have to ask around afterwards. So what I'm basically saying is when you ask questions or something on a form or something, do not get discouraged, especially by the trolls. Really, there are a lot of them. They just come in and say, oh, you're doing it wrong, and then that's it. Just stick to those people that are there to give you constructive criticism because actually they're trying to help you, all right? Not those little one little answer trolls. Ignore those. They're worthless people. You don't want to deal with them. All right, so throughout these videos, you're going to hear me mention a few names. One is Tom Barr. One is Diana Wallstad, and one is Takashi Amano. Now, I mention these people because they're kind of important. They're going to come up on your research if you get into the plant tank stuff, the like the real advanced plant tank stuff. A lot of their methods and teachings have influenced this hobby of planted tanks. So really quick rundown. First guy I mentioned is Tom Barr. He's been in this hobby for a while now. When I was back in the 13 years ago, he was there in the news groups talking about planted tanks and stuff. He came up with the EI index, the estimated index dosing method. As well, he has a PhD in plant sciences and he teaches biology in college. The next person I will most likely mention is Diane Wallstead. She wrote a book called The Ecology of Planet Tanks and she advocates the soiled substrate planet tank. It's also a whole complete method. They call it the Wallstead method, which you use soil so that once the tank is established, you don't have to do that much water changes, maybe water change every three or four months kind of thing. You don't need filtration because all the plants are handling the filtration. Everything revolves around a very natural state of a planted tank. So you should check that out. That book is a really good book. Next person you'll hear me mention is Takashi Amano. He's been in this hobby forever, right? Um, he's the guy that created the Iwagumi style tank. He started as a photographer, a nature photographer, and he just brought that into doing planet tanks. And oh my God, the guy is a genius. So before we go on, we have to really talk about doing planet tanks. It's all about patience because you gotta give the plants time to grow. And while they're growing, that's when you start learning how they grow, how to make them grow better, how to make them grow lush and full and stuff like that. So a lot of it is about waiting. It's about watching and learning as you go. And the other thing about plant tanks is understanding how it grows so you know how to place it in your tank, especially when it comes to aquascaping. So that's stuff that you will have to learn. I just can't tell you. I could just say, hey, Amazon grows this big, it looks like this. And you're like, oh, I guess I'll put it here. Now, you really won't know until you see how it grows in your tank. Then you can move it later. Okay, that's the important thing. When you try to apply the aquascape, if you don't understand how the plants will grow at first, then you gotta have to actually see it grow in order to know where to put it. So that's important to understand. Patience, watching, learning, and understanding. Okay, why do you want to plant a tank? A lot of people simply want plant tanks because they want to have that natural look in their aquariums. I mean, nothing beats real life plants as opposed to plastic plants. I don't know why anyone uses plastic plants. If you're using plastic plants, don't talk to me. I don't know you. I'm a purist, okay? If you're going to use plants in your planted tank, use real plants, okay? If you're going to use corals, use real corals in your reef tank, right? But that's just me. So I have to admit, in some cases, you do have to use plastic plants. For example, a fancy goldfish tank. They'll eat live plants up, and that's the problem with goldfish. They're like goats of the fish community. They'll eat anything they could fit in their mouth. 
Another thing about having plants in your aquarium is filtering. Plants will help filter your aquarium. So all the nasty stuff left behind with fish or the dying leaves or whatever turns ammonium, ammonium and nitrite, and the nitrite and the nitrates through your filter system. Well, the plants eat the ammonia and eats the nitrates, so it helps filter your tank. And in figuring that, it also allows you to put maybe a little bigger bio load in your tank because those heavily planted tanks are actually part of your filtering system. Now, this is not to say that you shouldn't have a filter in your tank. You should have a filter in your tank. Unless, again, if you go through the whole Diane Wallstone method where a heavily planted tank don't need a filtration system because the plants are doing the filtration for you. That is another whole scope that belongs into another video. We'll talk about that later. But for now, let's just say plants will help filter your tank. Safe space for fish. A heavily planted tank gives your fish feeling of safeness. You give them safe space. So if you hurt the feelings, they could go and hide behind a plant. But really, you know, in natural habitats, fish always have areas to hide from predators and stuff. A heavily planted tank will keep the fish feeling safe. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I'm on a heavily planted tank, I'll never see my fish. Actually, that's quite the opposite. Now that you gave them a safe place to hide or run to, the more daring they're going to feel about coming out into the open. You'll see that behavior with a lot of fishes. Now, as I mentioned before, planted tanks can be a hobby in itself. Not only do you just stick plants in your tank and just a bunch of it just to help with filtration to make them look natural, but there's a whole artistic side to it. Wait till you start looking up Dutch style tanks, Iwagumi style tanks, or just plain natural style planted tanks. They're all out there. If you search YouTube, you could see some gorgeous tanks out there. You could do it too. Finally, a lot of people have been asking me about advice about planted tanks. I was asking, well, do you just want planted tanks just to put in your tanks just to make them look natural? Or do you really want to get into the artistic history of it and understanding what the growing stuff? A lot of people are like, yeah, I want to understand. I want to do what you do. I mean, I've seen your videos and they look really, really nice. Here's the thing. Everyone's talking about how it looks nice. That's not what you want to do. That's not where you want to get. You don't want to get to the end. It's the journey that's the fun part. It's a journey about learning how certain plants grow, how they feed off of nutrients, how they affect your aquarium itself, the little ecology system that you got going there, how it affects the fish and stuff like that. So when you're going on this more advanced stuff about planted tanks, it's about the journey. You'll get to the end sooner or later, if there is an end. Because all these planted tanks, trust me, I'm always fiddling around with it, always changing it up. So I don't know if there's ever an end to it. If there is an end, well, you'll get there sooner or later. But it's always about the journey. Okay, here's some information before you start doing planted tanks. Some of it's really important to know. Some of it's not. It's just something that you should have in the back of your head while you're doing all this research and stuff and getting frustrated. In vitro plants. Now, some plants come in this little containers. They have gel right here. They're nutrient gels, okay? When you take it out of the box, you got to put it under water and wash that gel off. You don't want that gel in your aquarium. I mean, a little it's okay, but you want to just wash it all off as you can. Then you separate the plants, and they become little stemlings, right? And then you would plant them. Now, in vitro plants, I like them. I mean, you get a lot for just this little container here, but they're little stems, right? They're little baby plants. Second, they are grown in a sterilized environment, so you're guaranteed not to get snails or any parasites that come along with planted tanks from another aquarium. But really, that's really up to you if you really want to deal with in vitro plants. When you do, remember you're getting like really baby plants and you're going to grow them from little baby stemlings and, and watch them grow in fruitation. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. That's the other thing that you have to worry about. Melt back. You're going to hear a lot about your plants melting back or people's plants melting back or whatever. When you first get plants either from the store or from the internet, there's a possibility of melt back. There's a really good possibility melt back if that plant was grown submersed and now you're suddenly immersing it into water. So it's going to melt back and regrow. You're going to see that sometimes. So it really depends on the source of where you got your plant. Was it grown underwater already and it's shipped to you? During the shipment, was the plants like melting back already because it didn't get the light and nutrient it needs during the time it got to you? So there's a lot of factors in why plants melt. If it does melt, got to remember it does melt, pull off the old leaves or dead leaves or whatever and let it grow back on itself. Usually it will grow back and you'll be okay. 
Aquascaping tools. Now, you know, people see me use that on videos. Oh, I got some aquascaping tools. First of all, do you really need aquascaping tools, right? It helps. It really does. It makes it easy for you to plant plants, trim plants, or whatever. But if you're just starting out and you really haven't grown all your plants out or anything, you can wait a couple of months before getting them. But really, aquascaping tools are really cheap. Now, you can get a whole set for like under 20 bucks on Amazon nowadays. So, yeah, it's worth getting if you have the money. Research, 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 okay? You gotta know what plants you got to fit the environment of your aquarium. Do you have high lighting, low lighting, medium lighting? Are you running CO2 or are you not running CO2? You know, what kind of subject you have? All that comes in the effect of the type of plants you can grow. In this video series, we're talking about low tech stuff, really easy to grow low light plants, okay? So we're gonna go with that. But when you're looking at you know, videos or you look at pictures like, oh, I wanna grow that plant, make sure you can grow it first. Make sure it could fit in your tank. You have to do research on them like you should be doing research on the fish that you get. When some people get some new plants, especially when it's not in vitro, they will sometimes either quarantine them or they might purify them, let's just say. Purifying really means you take a couple gallons of water, take one cap full of chlorine, bleach, and then um, just bleach it for like a few seconds, pull it out and then rinse it again with clean water. That's one way to get rid of snails and parasites on your plants. Do I do it? Sometimes it depends. If it's a trusted source that I buy from all the time, I don't usually bother. I, I usually trust that source. But then again, I always try to find trusted sources to buy from. Now, whether or not you want to quarantine your plants or parify them, that's really up to you. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about the three major factors of growing plants in your aquarium. And this is a playlist, so you're already just start from the playlist, and I'll give you all the videos in this series. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please like it. That helps. Again, thank you. Have fun and have fun with your aquariums. I'll talk at you guys later.